Nucleic acids are one of the four basic kinds of organic molecules. Now, they're used, as many of you know, to store genetic information, and that's the famous DNA and RNA, whether DNA storing genetic information long term inside of the nucleus of one of your cells, or for transferring that genetic information from the cell, from the nucleus, that, uh, that is, out to the ribosomes, and that would be in the form of messenger RNA. Now, what a lot of people don't think about is that actually nucleic acids are used as a means to transfer our uh, energy. And that's the molecule known as ATP. And that's a trick question that a lot of really sneaky bio teachers like myself will sometimes like to sneak in there. Because people forget that ATP is actually a kind of nucleic acid uh, nucleotide. And that leads into what are the monomers of nucleic acids? The nucleotides are those monomers, the building blocks that are used to build the longer polymers of nucleic acids. Now, the basic structure of a nucleotide is that you'll have at the heart a five carbon sugar, sometimes called a pento sugar. Os meaning carbohydrate, pent meaning five. On one end of our pento sugar, we'll have a phosphate group, and this gives a strong negative charge to molecules like DNA and RNA. On the other end, you'll have the one thing that makes one nucleotide different from the other, and that's a base that has the element nitrogen in it. Because this molecule has, or this base has some nitrogen in it, they'll often call it a nitrogenous base. If you look at DNA, DNA uses one of four possible nitrogenous bases. Those are thymine, often abbreviated T, cytosine, often abbreviated, you got it, C, adenine, which has two rings in its nitrogenous base, abbreviated A, and guanine, another of the two-ringed uh, nitrogenous bases. RNA is very similar. It will use guanine, adenine, and cytosine. The one difference in the bases between RNA and DNA is that they'll have uracil in place of thymine. Now let's take a look at how you join these nucleotides together. And what happens is that the phosphate of one nucleotide here joins to the sugar of the next nucleotide, forming a long strand of DNA nucleotides or RNA nucleotides, kind of like in a little Congo line. Now, DNA is very famous for having a structure known as the double helix. And that's because DNA, you'll get one strand over here and another strand over there. Now, notice how this strand here, the phosphate is pointing upwards. Here, it's pointing down. That's called anti-parallel, where the two strands are moving or are aligned in opposite directions. These little dashed lines here are things called hydrogen bonds, and they're what are holding this strand here to that strand there. Now, you commonly will draw DNA in a ladder form like this, kind of like this looks like a ladder. All right. But you know that DNA forms a double helix. A helix is a corkscrew shape. Now, we call it a double helix because there's one, two strands, and they get twisted up in this shape like that. So this is the structure of nucleic acids. Again, individually, it's just a, two long chains of nucleotides joined together. But when wound up, it forms the nice, long-term, uh, stable structure known as the double helix.